When working with jQuery, you should always plug in the CDN. The CDN is a acronym for Content Delivery Network. It allows your web page to connect to the jQuery library. Place this script tag above the closing body tag or custom script tag in your page. These script tags can be found online. If you go to Google and Google jQuery CDN, you will get a list of options for jQuery CDNs all over the internet. You can also Google jQuery CDN Google. That will give you the hosted libraries page. The hosted libraries is the Google specific CDN page. It allows you to select jQuery from the right hand side and select version 2.0. This library is hosted on Google servers. It's very dependable. We choose 2.0 because it's the middle range jQuery version. Three is the latest, but unfortunately, because it's such a new addition, sometimes it may not work with certain plugins. So it's always safe to use two, unless otherwise instructed. You can see that we've pasted that here in our HTML. On the next line below, we have our custom code, which we just put between two script tags. You can see the closing script tag there. All JavaScript goes directly above the closing body page, sorry, body tag of the HTML page. Initially, we spoke about hide show, and then we went on to discuss chaining. Now I'd like to talk about click events. jQuery allows users to target all the different kinds of events that can happen within a web page. Some of the events you could imagine are hovering, clicking, scrolling, and hitting the keyboard. Here we're using what's known as the jQuery click method. Our selector is targeting button A, and it's using a hash here. After we select button A, we then use the dot click method, which starts and ends in the highlighted code. We say when button A is clicked, we will run a function, and inside of that function, these actions will be performed. First of all, let's take a look at button A, this piece of code. The dollar sign means select, and the hash or kind of a four cross symbol represents an ID. If we scroll up the page, you can see that we have four buttons on our page. They're represented here within the Visual HTML. These four buttons all have a class of BTN and IDs. When we're using IDs in code, we use what's known as a hash symbol, also in CSS as well, if you want to target IDs. IDs are specifically made for JavaScript and or jQuery. IDs are special because they're unique within the HTML. You can only have one specific ID per page, meaning we can't have another hash button A or another ID of button A somewhere else in our HTML. We can only have one, they're unique. So this bit of code more or less says when we click button A, blue will hide. I'm just gonna save that down Let's reload and see what happens. Here's button A. When I click it, you can see that blue is hiding. Let's change the code. Something to keep in mind is the space in between the curly brackets after function is what's known as the function area. This is where you can place code statements to control all kinds of things once the click occurs. So other than blue hide, what I'll also do here is an alert. An alert is JavaScript, it doesn't use jQuery, and it basically creates a page alert that will give us a message. I'll just type hello. If I reload and we do the click again, you can see the alert springs up and then the blue div begins to hide. Now we started to see what can be viewed as somewhat of an issue, and we can illustrate that more by putting another line of code in. Even though the alert worked, it happened visually before the hide. If you see it again, we do a reload. You can see alert happens first and then we 
after we click the OK on the alert, we can see the rest of the hide. Now this has to do with code sequence and it's about how we control the different steps of code in between the function brackets. I'll show you what I mean. If I take this line of code and duplicate it, and instead of doing blue, I do green. When I hit save and reload the page, you can see now that both blue and green disappear at the same time. Now, what some people may wish want to do is have blue hide, then on the next line, green hides. But the computer doesn't always work that way, or the JavaScript compiler. It will immediately fire these functions because they are in one clump, more, in, more or less. What we need to do in order to control things is either use things like chaining, which we did here, or more specifically, a callback function pattern. And we're going to look at that right now. I'm just going to comment out uh, number three in the code file. And we're going to scroll down to this final section of code. And you can see here that something slightly different is happening. First of all, in the selector, we're now selecting button B. So we're going to select this button here. And we're saying when we click button B, this function will run. Remember from the previous video, if we click on the curly bracket, you can see a line underneath the first curly bracket and a line underneath the last curly bracket. That shows you where the function starts and ends. Now, after button B click runs, this function will perform. But it's not just simply the code up here where we just put one statement after the other. The code that you can see on lines 113 to 117 is what's known as a callback function. Here's your callback function in the code. Now, a callback function is a way of controlling code. What it does is it makes sure that this action, hide, is performed first. And once that finishes, then this callback function will run. What I'll just do is change the timing a little bit so we don't have to wait for nine seconds. We'll wait for four, and this one will happen across four as well. So more or less, when I click button B, green will hide first across four seconds, and then callback function runs, and inside callback function, yellow will hide. This is to do with code control and how to sequence events within JavaScript code. Let's have a look at it working. If I reload the page and then click button B, first of all, green is hiding. And once it's finished, then yellow hides. This illustrates the importance of what is known as a callback function. If you want to learn the basics of jQuery, learn basic statements like click events, uh, hide show, but also take the time to learn a callback function. A callback function will allow you to control code and make sure it steps in sequence so certain things happen after other things finish. I'm going to write this from the start one more time just so we can see how it's written. The code format is a little bit tricky if you're new to code, but once you get used to it, it's not a problem. Instead of green and yellow, this time I'm going to do red and I'm going to do hide. And I'm going to hide red across four seconds. Now that is enough when we click on button B to make red hide. So we just have this little line of code in here. Let's go and have a look. Reload, button B, red will hide. That's the only code we've written at this point in time. Now what I want to do is make sure that blue hides after red has finished. And as we saw before, if I was just to make the same line of code underneath, I'm not going to get the desired result. Let's save that down and have a look at what happens. Click button B, first red and blue at the same time. So the JavaScript compiler is running both of these calls almost instantaneously. What we want to do is use a callback function to run this part of the code. I'll just push this down a little bit. 
So what we do for a callback function is in the jQuery hide method, if the callback function is available, you just put a comma after the uh, numbers or timing number, space, function, parentheses, curly brackets. That there is the single line of code for a callback function. Click in between the curly brackets, enter, enter, highlight blue hide. Let's bring that up inside of the function. Now we have ourselves a callback function that starts here and ends here. And what we're saying is just like the one above, red will first hide across four seconds. Once that is finished, this callback function will run and then blue will hide. Let's see if this works. Reload. Here we go, clicking button B. Red hides first. And then blue hides after. Now, if you look at a callback function, a click event function, standard jQuery statements, and chaining, you already have three or four basic jQuery coding patterns for your toolkit. One thing worth mentioning is if you were to Google one of the jQuery methods, in this case, hide, you can go straight to the jQuery API documentation. jQuery as a code base has a fairly good documentation hub where you can look up the different methods you can use and also look into how they work. The part I wanna show you is this part here. If you look up a method like hide, show, fade in, fade out, and you can see this complete uh, code reference in the documentation near the top, what that means is you can run a callback function once the animation is complete. And that's what we just did in the previous example. Additionally to the API documentation on the jQuery website, if you find a new method, as we shall see in add class or using jQuery CSS methods, if you scroll down, you will eventually find code examples, very simple ones. Sometimes the code examples are a little bit complex, but jQuery's API documentation usually has several examples for you to use. So you can usually find something that you can copy across to your project and customize to your own needs.